Okay, it is 5.30 p.m. I'd like to convene this meeting of the Board of Directors of the San Lorenzo Valley Water District. Would the Secretary please call the roll? I do. President Hill. Here. Director Fultz. Here. Director Largay. Here. Director Smith. Here. All right, everyone's here. Thank you. Okay, um, we'll be starting out this evening with a closed session. So uh, changes to the closed session agenda, additions to the agenda, if any may be made, only made in accordance with California Government Code 54954.2, the Ralph M. Brown Act, which includes, but is not limited to, additions for which the need to take action is declared to have arisen after the agenda was posted, as determined by a two-thirds vote of the Board of Directors, or if less than two-thirds are present, a unanimous vote of those members present. Okay, oral communications regarding items in closed session. This portion of the agenda is reserved for oral communications by the public or items which are on the closed session agenda portion of closed session portion of the agenda. Any person may address the board of directors at this time on closed session items. Normally presentations must not exceed three minutes in length and individuals may speak only once during the oral communications. Please state your name and town or city of residence at the beginning of your statement for the record. Hi, good evening, Board Directors, Don Kirkman and Logan. I strongly feel that Brian Cruz is not a good fit for SLVWD. He is very disrespectful to the board members, staff, and ratepayers. He's very unprofessional. He is not management material. Please do not hire him permanently and continue the search through ads, websites, headhunters. Don't settle for Brian Cruz. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I was going to come up here and use a couple of the phrases that Mr. Cruz used in the public meeting. And you know, I, I can't bring myself to say those words that he used. And he said to one of the members of the board, but he said them to all the board and to the public and to the CCTV. If you don't know what those words are, there are a couple of what uh, are called F bombs. One is blank, shut the bank up. And the other one is you. Blank, blank. If you don't know what those words are, I suggest you go to CCTV and let them watch what everybody else who has access to the computer to watch that. I strongly suggest that you don't hire Brian Foose or whatever his name is, he's not a good fit. He's a very poor fit. And you also have a member of the staff who came down here and told you that the same thing is happening in the office. He's using, he's creating a hostile environment. And if you don't get sued, or if you hire him, he's not gonna be any, less of a pain in the B-U-T-T. -T. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm Bruce Holloway from Boulder Creek. At the end of the last meeting, uh, Brian interrupted me to say that there could be no public comment on written correspondence. And um, I was protesting that, yes, um, I can comment on any item and uh, then he asked the lawyer, and the lawyer straightened him out. Um, so I was allowed to speak. And I, I want to point out that he continued to interrupt me even after I started speaking. So I'm really, I've been watching for months and I'm wondering how far you could go, how far staff can go, how far the board can go in interrupting public comment. The public members, when they're trying to comment, our time is always limited and we only get one chance to speak. So if we get interrupted, um, it, can, it can 
derail our tra train of thought. I mean, I think it's very unfair uh, to be badgering and hectoring members of the public when they're speaking. But the other thing I realized is that we've been down this path before. The board uh, adopted an unconditional uh, an unconditional agreement to allow public comment. Uh, and this happened in 2018. So I went and looked it up. There, there, there's a file full of resolutions from year 17 and 18. And resolution number 19 is the one where the board already covered this issue, already made an unconditional comment. So I'm disappointed at the loss of institutional knowledge that this has all been forgotten. Uh, none of the current board members were on the board in 2018. This happened in the spring. Um, it was a different Brian, who was the district manager then, different district council, and it seems like everybody, everybody forgot about it. But on the way to um, on the way to uh, finding resolution number 19, I had to go past the respectful workplace policy and the employee discipline policy. Uh, the respectful workplace policy talks about intimidation, talks about violence, and intimidation is one form of violence. And that's what I observed at the last meeting. Uh, Brian was standing over Director Fultz and insisting that he would not interrupt him, and even though obviously he's a famous interrupter himself. Um, and then it also talks about uh, verbal abuse, which I guess I would characterize what we saw as verbal abuse. And I don't understand how you can have a leader who uh, makes a mockery of the district's respectful workplace policy. The employee discipline system says that any other employee uh, starts out with six months probation and it can be extended for a year to a, to a total of a year. And I think he certainly has given cause to have that policy enforced on him. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Deborah Lowen from Long Pico Canyon. And I have written to all the board members, and so I won't repeat a lot of what I've written to you. I've voiced my concerns very similar to my fellow citizens here. Um, I will also say that I've run into people on the street who have seen the CTV at the last meeting and they're appalled. And I said it's even worse. His um, contract is on the agenda of this meeting, and they cannot believe you would consider it. So please take that into mind. Um, I also went through the respectful workplace policy last month or last meeting. I sent you a letter about four policies that have been broken by Mr. Cruz. Um, directors may ask for specific items to help them in their legislative decisions, and he's refused to do so. That's in subordination. Um, I also went through the respectful workplace policy, and there's there's too many to list that have been broken by Mr. Cruz. Um, if you're not going to, if you're not going to enforce anything, um, pretty much that's what your policies are worth. On the um, in Mr. Cruz's contract, I noticed a statement that I'm also very pulled by. The board of directors may not terminate this agreement without cause within 120 days of a board of director election where two or more non-incumbents are elected. Um, that sounds really dirty. This is dirty politics. What in the world does a district manager's employment have to do with who is serving on the board and how we can control that? This is wrong. If you're going to consider this contract, that has to be removed or just reject it outright and come back. Um, I suggest you do not approve this contract now, tonight, or ever. And in fact, that's what needs to be done with this contract. Thank you. Thank you. We will now adjourn to closed session. Do you have anyone on the line? I'm sorry? Do you have anyone on the line? Uh, I, I don't know. No, I didn't see it. No.
which includes but is not limited to additions for which the need to take action is declared to have arisen after the agenda was posted as determined by a two thirds vote of the board of directors or if less than two thirds of the members are present, a unanimous vote of those members present. Do we have any changes to the agenda? Excuse me, isn't there public comment on the out of closed session? Uh, look, items in closed session are confidential. Okay. Excuse me. Public was, comment. He was asking about public comment, and there was public comment um, at five thirty prior to going into closed session. It already occurred. Right. Well, I mean, on that subject, though. Right. Yes. So before the closed session uh, meeting, there was a period of public comment uh, for that closed session. Yes. Item. Director Fultz. Yeah, I'd like to move that we postpone to the uh, next regular meeting, the first meeting in September, uh, item 10B, uh, which is the general manager contract. I'll second that. Any discussion? Public comment? Yeah, I have a comment. So what contract is he working under now? He has a, an interim contract that he's been working on for several months. That was extended for two months when it was? Uh, it's actually been extended for more than that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Call a roll. Okay. President Hill? Yes. Director Fultz? Yes. Director Largay? Yes. And Director Smalley? Yes. Unanimous. Thank you. Okay, next item is unfinished business. We have none, new business, vacancy of an elected office. Of um, the I'm sorry, did you skip the general public comment? Oh, general. Number eight, oral communications for items not on the agenda. Oh, please. Yes, I did, thank you. Hi, um, I'm Nicole Barrage, Lauder Barrage. I am with Brock and Bray Community. I'm familiar with most of you. Um, I just want to, since the consolidation uh, working session was not on the uh, board meeting, I just thought I would add that in and potentially on the 15th we could have that discussion, the larger consolidation conversation that needs to happen for four springs and bracket breaks. I just want to remind you that that commitment has been uh, verbalized by the board members to have happen, and we just need to get agendized. Thank you. Thank can, you. I, can I ask a question? Oh. Hi, uh, thanks very much. So at our last board meeting, you shared some written materials afterwards. Um, and uh, I believe you, believe you handed out some written materials. Yes. Uh, thank you for doing that. I don't know if you have any other uh, written materials uh, that you have gathered on that question. And uh, if you do, if you have the opportunity to send them to our email addresses, uh, they're on the board website. Um, that would be helpful for um, me in particular trying to get caught up on this stuff. Oh, I appreciate that. I can share. Um our letter of intent, the application for the DWR, and then the award contract. And um, Brian reached out this afternoon, so I'm looking forward to having a meeting regarding Brack and Bray and working with council to talk about our FEMA funding and um, a, a, a consolidation agreement, but the larger conversation needs to happen. And just to clarify, which I probably didn't do a very good job last week or last time, was that we have three weeks until our FEMA dollars expire. So we have three weeks um, to show actual movement in regards to our permanent work, or we have the potential of losing $1.265 million and also losing the ability to um, apply for 140,000. So we've asked uh, the staff to give us permission to work with Sandus to just adapt the drawings enough to submit them to FEMA. So we're hoping that happens. Uh, if you uh, thank you very much, and if you do have documents that aren't in a digital format, like uh, with handwritten notes on them, okay. feel free to just take pictures of them and, and email those pictures. That's perfectly uh, useful. Thank you, Brian. Thanks so much. I appreciate. It. Thank you. Do you have any other public comments at this time? Seeing none. Um, Moving on to unfinished yeah. business, there is none. There might be one online. Oh, do we have one online? I'm sorry. Yeah. 
there it is, Danielle's. Yes, thank you for taking my comment. I just wanted to check in with the board. I'm uh, the treasurer of Four Springs. And currently, I don't know why we're not on the agenda to discuss. I thought last time there was a board meeting that it was agreed that we were gonna go forward with the first section of the consolidation. And now I don't, I don't know where we stand on that. Um, our, currently, we're not even getting water from SLV Water District because of issues that we've had with the uh, water pressure. So a couple of months ago, our pump went out due to the low water pressure that we were receiving from SLV, and we've been trying to get that fixed. We got the pump replaced, and now that pump won't work because the water pressure is so low. So we're just, we're really struggling here. We've had to truck in water and we're currently getting water from Big Basin Water, which is putting pressure on their system. Um, we are struggling with, um, you know, our, our distribution system has been um, hurt by the fire and we are continually working uh, against water, the pipes breaking. And we've had to truck in water at least four times in the past six weeks. So I'm just giving you the information that I have and that I would like to see some, some support from SLV Water District on one, going forward with the consolidation and two, getting support for the services that we already have from you guys. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Uh, I would like staff to follow up on this and uh, be prepared to discuss it at the next meeting. Jeff, I can give an answer right now if you'd like. Thank we, you. We have followed up on it. We have 60 pounds of pressure at their inlet side of their pump, mm -hmm. which is exactly the calculations from our tank level mm -hmm. to their pump level in elevation. Uh, we can't supply any more. The piping hasn't changed except for to the new 12 inch, which is larger than the six inch that was feeding their connection. Mm -hmm. And nothing's changed on our end. We did go out, we found a valve closed at the meter that we did not close. It's their valve. Yep. Don't know if that's the issue. I tried calling Miles from Forest Spring or from Cypress Water. Haven't got a response back. We have no issues on our end. We're supplying exactly what we can supply and no less. Thank you. So that was Danielle speaking earlier. Um, if you still have problems, please contact us again. <sighs> okay. This is Yvonne Linton from Forest Springs. Actually, I live in Sunnyvale. My husband and I, Sam, here, we own co own a home with our, our son here in Boulder Creek. Every meeting I come to, I drive two hours round trip. And every meeting I come to, I leave with more questions than I came with, and still uncertainty about what the commitment is from the board to support the, our communities of Brackenbury and Forest Springs. And I'm not oblivious to the fact that y'all have put in a ton of work. And what was that? Uh, but I would like to know uh, what exactly, why we are not on the agenda today as well. I second what Danielle said. Um, if we need to come to another meeting on the 15th, and I still, despite asking several times, do not have a clear indication of what first step needs to happen before losing all that funding. I would just love to have a little bit of clarity on that because I know what a tremendous amount of work Nicole in particular has put in. I mean, to give up your job, to pour your heart and soul into the community. And I know you must all get tired of hearing all this, but we are kind of in rough straits. And I would just love to hear that some positive form progress is happening and that yes, the board commits to helping us. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comment. Do we have any other comments from the public? Oral communications. May online. Excuse me. There's somebody online, Karen. Uh, I don't see her, but yes, if there's yes, Karen Vitale. Yes, um, I also uh, am a resident at Forest Springs and on the board of Forest Springs, and I've commented at uh, a few meetings recently 
Um, I think what we're truly concerned about is what uh, Yvonne was saying. It is very unclear to us what the next steps are, and we are literally in an emergency situation in our neighborhood. So we need to truly comprehend what is the pathway here for moving forward. There was a motion that carried in the last meeting affirming the consolidation and how it would be funded, and yet we don't see that the bid package has gone out. We don't see any further action. Is 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 that what we're expecting is to see nothing? What happens next? And if we can get that clarity and make sure that we do not lose the millions of dollars that the state is planning to put into uh, at least getting this project started, um, we, we just need to understand what's going on here and make sure this truly is a priority. Th that's the entirety of my comment. Thank you very much. Okay. We have another one online. Oh, Jensen. Oh, Jensen. Yes, thank you. I I am a. I have spoken before at your meetings, and I'm from Brackenbrae, and I. I had trouble getting on, so I just got on. But I um, am concerned because at the last meeting there was a request to have a working meeting. Uh, we we did not have that working meeting. Uh, it seems to me that these we've been working on this for a long time, and uh, for a while it was moving ahead, and then for months it stopped. Uh, I don't understand what's going on, but I'm very frustrated, and uh, my belief you know, in the movement ahead with San Lorenzo Valley is is really shaken because it just seems like there's the inability to move ahead and and uh, and make progress. So I am frustrated and I can tell you that uh, there are many others out there that are frustrated. Uh, we'd like to see some action. We'd like to know what's going on. We'd like to see more transparency. So that that's the end of my comment. Thank you very much. Um, I believe that the board actually has voted to uh, have a work session, so I would like staff to please set that up. No, it was supposed to be last week. Pardon? No, it was supposed to be last week. Well, it didn't happen, so I would like staff to please set that up <laughs> and report back to us on when it is set. Okay. Um, no more comments online. No business. Vacancy of an elective office of the Board of Directors, San Lorenzo Valley Water District. We are short one director here. So I uh, let me find a procedure here that I had for this. If I can find it. Okay. Okay, I did not find my written copy of the procedure. However, it's pretty simple. Um, we can't hear do you. Want, you. Sorry, do you want me to present this item? Would you please? So, essentially, you're interviewing and yes. potentially nominating a a candidate to someone to fill the vacancy left by Jamie Ackerman. Uh, you have two candidates to interview. And basically, we suggest that you've already reviewed the written applications. So you allow the applications to applicants to introduce themselves, interview applicants, ensuring that each one is asked the same prepared questions, conduct public oral communications, including public comment. Mm -hmm. For discussion, allowing each director to speak at least once before entertaining motions, and then consider any motions to appoint one of the applicants to the vacant board seat. Okay. And there's a recommended motion um, if you so choose to fill the vacancy. Yeah. Okay, so we have two candidates that have submitted their applications. Uh, Elena Lang 
and Bruce Holloway. Have all the board members read the uh, application forms and uh, their qualifications? Yes. Do any of the board members have any questions regarding the qualifications or uh, objections to the qualifications on the written paper? I'd like to hear from both candidates first. They will. Great. We'll get to them after that. Okay, so now let's ask the candidates to speak and so Mr. Holloway, would you like to come up and speak on your behalf? Hi, I'm Bruce Holloway from Boulder Creek. Um, is this when I'm supposed to introduce myself? Um, yes. I've been a district customer since 1982, which is 42 years. Um, which is about half of the lifetime of the district. Mm -hmm. um, most of those years I was working and uh, paying my water bill and, and didn't, I read the newspaper, but I, I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to what was going on here. Uh, and then in about 2011, I began coming to board meetings. Uh, there was a rate increase in uh, 2011, and I guess that's what stimulated me. I wanted to start coming and educating myself. I was trying to understand why the water rates always went up more than the rate of inflation. I think we had pretty low inflation in 2011. Uh, the rates were going up a lot more. So I began coming to meetings, and um, and I've come to a lot of meetings since then. So I guess uh, that's about enough to introduce myself, I think. Okay. Um, do we have Elena Lang online? She has contracted. Yeah, yeah. She has contracted COVID, so we've agreed to allow her to uh, give her presentation online. Um, but um, before we do that, since Mr. Holloway is up there, let us ask our board questions. And uh, Director Fultz, if you would like to. Ask a question of Mr. Holloway. I have no questions. Okay. Um, our water district is a member of the Santa Margarita uh, Groundwater Agency. Um, we've been in that role uh, since 2017. Um, and in the time that I've been on the board, I've heard um, some differing opinions as to whether we should be part of that agency. Uh, what's your view on the agency itself and uh, our participation in it? So I grew up in Santa Clara County and there was, um, there was overdrafting of groundwater in Santa Clara County back in, back in 1960. Uh, and this turned into a lawsuit, and it uh, turned into some state legislation that created the Santa Clara Valley Water District. So I guess I've been aware of the uh, groundwater issues. Uh, the problem with groundwater is that it's it's subject to a race to the bottom, where all the different well owners are trying to uh, pump water, and at some point there needs to, it, there needs to be a way to get all of that under control so that uh, nobody pumps too much and it, it doesn't it, it isn't it isn't a detriment to to the entire community so that already took place 60 years ago in santa clara county uh, but there was still a need statewide for the same kind of solution and eventually i mean it took many years but eventually in 2014 the state passed sigma the sustainable groundwater management act and that's what led to all of the groundwater agencies, like the one mm -hmm. uh, that Sapphire Creek Water District is part of. Um, and the, well, as I recall, the two water districts, Scotts Valley and SLE Water District, need to be part of the Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency. And Sigma also uh, made the county a part of every groundwater agency all over the state. My understanding of why that was, was that the counties were supposed to represent the well owners in, in, in between the 
districts. Um, I'm going to make a side comment here that I don't think that's exactly how it's worked played out with the Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency, but the two water districts and the county are the three members that, that need to be part of the Santa Margarita Agency. And the other members that are on the board, it is a complicated structure because it's kind of a two-level board structure. Um, the other members were added for, for various reasons. Okay. But, but, but the three members are the ones that can uh, can agree to indebtedness, that can reorganize the, the agency and, and make all of the all of the decisions. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Dr. Um, I, I wonder if you might describe your volunteer service uh, in the community, uh, particularly as it relates to the district. Well, um, I moved here in 82, and it was a few months, I think, before I discovered uh, Quail Hollow Road uh, as a back way out of Ben Loman, because I was living in Ben Loman at the time. And the very first time I drove down Quail Hollow Road, I saw Quail Hollow, the property there, and I thought to myself, I hope they never turn this into a golf course. Uh, that was my first thought on the very first drive down that road. So as it played out uh, in, the, in the 80s, I guess around 1987, the state helped the county buy the property from the Santa Clara County Office of Education, who had owned it for some time. Um, and so I was I was delighted that it became a county park. And uh, I participated in a series of public meetings for about a year and a half uh, to talk about what to do with the park. Uh, and that's a whole long story. Um, but anyway, uh, afterward, I decided to be, I was, I was in the very first class of distance uh, at Quail Hollow Park, and I did it for a couple of years. Uh, at that point, my son was born in 1990, and I began having, I needed more time to spend with him, and uh, so I only did that job for, for two years. There wasn't a whole lot going on out there at the time, so when people came, uh, there really was only one trail that I remember, it was the one that went up to the top. And people would come and we would talk to them. We talked to them a little bit about the wildlife. Sometimes we saw golden eagles and, and things. Uh, but there wasn't a whole lot to do in those days. Um, I was there on the weekends to, to meet people that came out to visit the park. And I, I've got a couple other volunteer jobs there, I guess. Should I talk about those? or? Um, th that's that uh, uh, the, service at Quail Hollow is terrific. Was a, I was I was a nonprofit. I, I was a treasurer of a nonprofit. Uh, we only had three employees: one one full time employee, and two part time employees. Uh, so it's kind of a small operation, a little bit like BCRPD. And uh, I I did the payroll. I wrote all the checks. Uh, I invested the money that uh, surplus funds that were there. I had to deal with restricted funds and keep, up, keep it all straight. What funds were restricted, what funds were in the general fund. Uh, so I had uh, some experience that I think is relevant here. Um, and then I guess the other volunteer job I, I, I put there was uh, I was a jail visitor at the main jail mm. with a group called Friends Outside. And I can tell you that was an amazing experience. I met so many people. I met um, I met three people who had very were, were there for very serious crimes that I was reading about in the in the newspaper at the same time. Some of the service that we did, people um, people just wanted a photograph. They wanted a, a photograph or something that they could put on the wall. They wanted song lyrics or guitar tabs to to play music. Those were some of the easy things that, that people wanted. Um, there were a couple that I remember that had family court problems. So there's nothing like being in jail and having a family court problem too, you know, some kind of custody issue. Uh, and I was able to figure out what forms they needed so that they could make whatever application that they needed uh, to the court. Um, there was one young man that I met who I had seen baptized. I knew his family, and uh, I had actually been to his house. I, met his, I knew his parents very well. Um, 
So I, I just had a series of amazing experiences with different people mm -hmm. in that job. Thank you. Thank you. So my question is that one of the issues looming for the district is conjunctive use of our water resources. And in particular, perhaps in conjunction with city of Santa Cruz water de uh, department. Do you have any thoughts you'd care to give us on conjunctive use and how that would impact uh, the district? Well, I am uh, very much supportive of the idea of conjunctive use. The district has always practiced conjunctive use uh, with stream water in the winter and, mm -hmm. and well water in the summer uh, with the Olympia well fields. Mm -hmm. um, the Energy Project opened up whole new possibilities because it's mm -hmm. con connected the whole district together. Um, and I, I want to see us do more. Mm -hmm. in, in 2011, there was a strategic planning meeting that took place on a Saturday. And I remember uh, Jim Mueller was the district manager at the time. And he went up to the whiteboard and he drew a picture of the whole county. And then he started drawing inner ties that were going to connect proposed inner ties. So in 2011, inner tie number one on the inner tie project was between Scotts Valley and Santa Cruz. And I guess that's being built today. Yeah. But it was part of the proposal in 2011 that did not get built. Mm -hmm. So when uh, Mr. Mueller was drawing this picture, it became very clear to me that Scotts Valley needs a surface water. They need access to a surface water source. Mm -hmm. uh, now, we already have conjunctive use within our district. The city of Santa Cruz pretty much practices conjunctive use mm -hmm. uh, within their water system. But Scotts Valley only has access to groundwater. Yes. And they, in the long run, they need some kind of access to surface water. And they can get it either from us or from the city of Santa Cruz. And that much was clear to me in 2011. Mm -hmm. And if I were in Scotts Valley, if I, if I were with Scotts Valley Water District, I would probably try to play the two off and figure out where I could get the best deal. Yep. And at this point, it seems like things have evolved where they are making plans to get their service water from Santa Cruz. I guess that's what that enterprise is for. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, I'm a big supporter of the idea of, of conjunctive use. I think we need to go further uh, within our district, and maybe when we've done that, we can be part of the solution for Scotts Valley, too. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we will now move on to Elena Lang. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Elena, can you hear us? I can hear you. Okay. Oh. Would you just introduce yourself, please? Okay. Is there not going to be video and just uh, audio only? Um, That's fine. We um, should have video available, do we? CTV, can you promote Elena? She's promoted. She's an attendee. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> She's been promoted. Here we go. <clears throat> I think. All right. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, at first, I just want to apologize for not being able to attend in person this summer. It's just uh, it's been a summer of illness for my family. We've started and ended with COVID, plus some RSV and hand, foot, and mouth sprinkled in. But now, now my son has brought it home and given it to my husband and I. So, But I want to assure everyone that I take this opportunity very seriously. And if I could have gotten a negative test, I would be there in person with you all. Um, however, I want to keep you guys safe and not pass this on. Um, and if I'm appointed, I will, of course, make attending in person my top priority. And I did show this dedication during my three years, which I served on the Environmental and Engineering Committee, where my presence was critical to achieving quorum on numerous occasions. But in this instance, I ask you to forgive me for again joining you uh, via Zoom. But I believe I should be appointed for the following reasons. Firstly, I bring scientific knowledge to the district. With a marine biology degree and 15 years of experience working as a scientist with the Oregon and Washington Departments of Fish and Wildlife, Pacific Northwest National Laboratory, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and National Marine Fisheries, my professional background showcases a deep commitment to environmental conservation and scientific research. I've collected critical data and contributed to non-proprietary research that advocates for open source technological solutions. 
My local contributions here, such as installing the monitoring equipment and, call and conducting land surveys for dam removal studies, it further illustrates my hands-on involvement in environmental projects. Moreover, my extensive hiking and surveying experience within the watershed provides valuable firsthand insights into ecosystem dynamics and conservation needs. I also have an in-depth knowledge um, to evaluate the environmental issues of our water uh, watershed must contend with and to proactively mitigate the impact of our water use and infrastructure on the natural habitats and resources. You know, and this is key because although much of the board's conversations revolve around how to deliver affordable water to the commu community, ultimately, if we do not take care of our natural resources, there, there will be no water to deliver. So I believe I bring a balanced perspective to evaluate these short and long-term needs. Secondly, um, I'm an experienced public servant. My roles working with federal and state entities um, have made me familiar with government regulations and procedures. I've learned to work with NGOs and private landowners to collect uh, to collaborate on efforts aimed at ecosystem preservation and sustainable management practices. These experiments, experiences, um, they've left me better prepared to understand the regulatory framework that the water district must operate within and to engage our community members in the conversation about how best to meet their water-related needs. Thirdly, I've already proven myself to SLV Water. In 2021, I was appointed uh, to the SLV Water District's Environmental Committee, which later combined into the Environmental and Engineering Committee. During that com appointment, the completion of the Fall Creek Fish Ladder Rehabilitation Project uh, presented a significant challenge to the district. As a mandated project, it, it faced disqualifications from numerous grant opportunities, but through diligent research and participation in grant workshops, I was able to identify Prop 1 grant as a source of funding, and I wrote a letter of recommendation that ultimately played a key role in securing $1.1 million in grants for the project. Consequently, not only were these funds needed to complete the project obtained, but the water district was also <laughs> able to implement changes to the fish ladder uh, design for which I had advocated for to facilitate the, up, the safe upstream passage of our native lamprey, enabling them to reach their spawning grounds effectively. Like it was a financial and an environmental victory. Um, fourthly, I'm committed to the well-being of our community. Um, our, my commitment to our community extends beyond my professional roles in work with SLV Water District. Uh, for example, I've been assisting the Boulder Creek Recreation and Parks District to collaborate with the Santa Cruz Resource Conservation District to address longstanding passes issues with the dam at Barbara Day Park. Furthermore, my involvement with the Boulder Creek Recreation and Parks District's Master Tan Plan Sorry, that's a bit long one. The Boulder Creek Recreation and Parks District Master Plan Task Force, it really underscores my dedication to enhancing community spaces and engaging residents in shaping their recreational spaces. Most recently, I've been helping organize a community event and survey launch to gather community input and to ensure that our parks meet the diverse needs of our residents. I truly believe we must be good stewards of the environment at a local level and we must involve stakeholders from the start. Taking a proactive approach to the community engagement is essential as implementing plans without input can lead to costly discoveries later. And lastly, I am the democratic choice for this appointment as the runner up in the November 2022 election. In 2022, I ran for a seat on the SLVWD Board of Directors and despite being outspent 10 to one, I lost only by 51 votes. And that's a margin of 0.22% of the vote. And although I didn't win, uh, the outcome clearly demonstrates that I was strongly supported by voters and that the desire for my representation on the board was only marginally smaller that, than that from the winning candidates. So voters will have a chance to revisit this result in the upcoming November election. But in the meantime, uh, I believe I'm the clear choice for the close runner up when they were last given the opportunity um, to choose their directors. Thus, I believe the democratic thing to do would be to support my appointment as interim, uh, interim director now. But anyways, thank you everyone for your time and your hard work serving our community. Since 2020, I've been dedicated to working with the SLV Water District to achieve its goals in line with the community's well-being. And I'm prepared to continue this commitment as director. Uh, I would be grateful for your support as you consider whom to appoint to the vacant seat. Thank you, Elena. We'll now entertain questions from the board. Director Fultz. 
No questions. No questions. Director Smalley. Um, the same question that I asked earlier um, regarding the San Lorenzo, uh, I'm sorry, the Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency. Uh, what's your view on um, our participation with that agency? Mm. Yeah, uh, well, the main role of the Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency was um, in developing the, the GSP or the Groundwater Sustainability Plan. And back when that was happening, I attended a lot of those meetings when they were developing the climate models that they were going to use. And also the, the GSP, like it was developed to print, prevent our groundwater levels from long-term declines and uh, maintain the basin's groundwater pumping. This is really important for our area because um, our summer stream flows actually come from groundwater. And it's essential that we we maintain the the, ba the basin's ground levels. Um, you know, if we don't maintain the levels, it, it can actually decrease capacity over time. Um, so I strongly support the Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency and uh, SLV Water's role in it. Okay, thank you, Director Larkin. Uh, thank you. I, I was going to ask about volunteer service. You you provided a robust overview of that in your introductory re remarks, and oh. and you don't you don't feel like you need to repeat yourself. Thank you. Oh. Okay, I could add, I also volunteer at BCE <laughs> for, for the classrooms and field trips. Thanks very much. Okay, so um, I will ask you the same question I asked of Mr. Holloway, which is, um, what are your thoughts on conjunctive use? Yeah, well, it's it's always really important to be working with our uh, local watershed partners to ensure we're all using our water resources optimally, both for our customers and our, our aquatic species here. Um, so it, it's really hard right now because we have this watershed that's controlled by so uh, many different agencies and it's splitting all that apart. So I think it's it's really um, important that we move forward with this conjunctive use and we're all in agreement of, you know, the best way to use our water. Thank you. Okay. Um, we've looked at their resumes. We have heard their oral presentations, their answers to questions. Uh, do we have a motion from a board member to appoint one of them? I'll make a motion. We need, yeah, I was just going to say we need public comment. Okay, can we no public comment. Can, can we not, can we put out a motion first and not vote on it? You you may, yes. And then yes. solicit public comment? Yes. Okay. Um, I want to make the motion that the board appoints Alina Lang to fill the remainder of the term of office for the board seat left vacant by the resignation of Vice President Jamie Ackerman. Okay, so public comment. Hi, my name is Holly Hosick. I am a resident of Boulder Creek. And I would just like to say that um, Alina Lang has been a constant for the last few years at the district and she has been a positive impact or, or has had a positive effect on all of us. And I think that um, and accepting her into this position now would be a really good idea. Thank you. Thank you. Additional comments? Hi, Deborah Lowe and Malpico Canyon. As with the last time we had applicants for a board position, we have two very highly qualified people. Um, and as the last time, I commented that we we selected a environmental specialist, and um, we are probably full up on that category right now. And what we really need in our district is somebody more familiar with business and finance. And I believe that's Bruce Holloway is the clear winner on that one. Um, not as a consolation prize, but as maybe a suggestion, is Alina should apply for environmental planner. That way you can be able, um, if she has the qualifications for that position, I think you want to search her out. She's familiar with the district. Um, she has attended a lot of committee meetings. Mm -hmm. Bruce Holloway, I believe, has attended more over the past few years. He attends almost all the committee meetings and all the board meetings. So he has a very broad spectrum there. That you would bring to the board an advantage. Thank you. Do we have any additional public comments? Anyone online? Yes. 
Who do we have online here? Cynthia. Cynthia, can you uh, give us your comments? Yes, I wanted to second that comment that we're very fortunate to have two very qualified people applying. Um, I would also like to um, recommend Alina because of her actual service on the committee and um, her commitment to having run previously for the board position. And um, I just think she would be a great addition. I appreciate the need for people with more budget and finance experience, but I believe Bob Fultz provides that. And Director Smalley has uh, extensive experience with contracts and um, and I think Brian Largay has experience running nonprofits. And I so I think we have a very balanced board with a lot of great experience and I'd like to see Alina add to that. Thank you. Do we have any additional comments either online or from the public so, presence? You know, the board has a primary responsibility of finance. This is your financial is more important than environmental at this time. You constantly are saying we need the money. We need the money. You're always running low on money. It's because you're not watching the money. You have Bob Fultz who does finance, and that's the only one. You need more financial people on this board. Thank you for your comment. Any additional comments from the public? Seeing none, we have a motion on the floor. We have a second. I would second that motion. Okay, let's take a vote. President Hill. Uh, point of order, please. Does, yes. Does, does the board get to come? Yes. Okay. Yes. I wanted to make sure we did that. Do you want to comment? Yeah, I do. I have some comments about this. Because um, I'm going to be voting no on this. And it isn't necessarily directed at uh, Alina. I would vote the same, actually, if Bruce were the one. And I talked about this when the board decided to actually put this up for an appointment. This is an affront to our democratic system. We are literally seven days away from the a candidate filing period being closed. So as of you know, five minutes from now, uh, whoever gets this position, assuming it's Alina, will be able to run down to the county and, and file as an appointed incumbent as our other person that we uh, appointed recently, Brian Largay, is registered as an appointed incumbent. These kinds of things need to be decided by the people, not by the board, especially when we're this close into the election. Um, and for the board to have done this is, is just a complete affront to everything that our system stands for. It may be legal, but by God, it isn't right. And um, what this is going to do now is we have two people running that have the big thumb on the scale with the word incumbent behind them, which everybody knows is a big deal when it comes to voting. Uh, this person will have been an incumbent for about two months mm -hmm. when voting actually starts. Uh, the district has done similar things to this in the past by sliding somebody in and, and like this at the last minute, but normally it's taken place a little bit earlier, like like May or or April or something like that. We've never done anything where literally we're within one week of the candidate closing period to uh, to be done. Um, so that's why I'm voting no, and I and I voted no to actually bring this to uh, an appointment anyway. We should have just let let this go to an election, which we could have done very easily within our rights to do so. We are under no obligation legally to appoint anybody to this position in this fashion. Thank you. Any further comments from the board? 
Yeah. Seeing none, I'll call the roll. President Hill? Yes. Director Fultz? No. Director Largate? Yes. Director Smoller? Yes. Congratulations, Alina. Um, President, may I have yes. a procedure? Um, we want to have uh, Christina, or when do you need to swear her in? Yes, point, point, point of order. Is that something that can be done remotely? Or is there a legal requirement know. to have that done in person? Christina, would you answer that question? Um, she needs to sign her oath. So she does need to do it in person. If you did it now, it would be merely ceremonial and wouldn't really mean anything without her actually signing the oath of office. And would she be able to participate in the rest of the meeting and vote on items uh, yes. that are before the board as a ceremony? Excuse me, given that it's ceremonial. It, no, not but, unless someone has prepared an oath of office for her to, to, well, no, because she hasn't signed her oath of office, so she yeah. not participate. Yeah, thank you for that clarification. So I do have to ask, has this changed since where we were during the remote meetings aspect only during COVID? I because, could not answer that on the spot. Um, I, I was... Well, she still has to sign the document. I mean, you still have to sign the document. Agreed, agreed. Yes. But I was appointed at a virtual meeting, and, right. I, and I signed the document. Waivers. The, the, that, the end of that week. Yes. Yeah. 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 But, but she's even, uh, until she signs the document, she can you know, take right. the oath, but she until she signs the document, she shouldn't be voting. I, I am three minutes away if you need me to run down and sign something mm -hmm. mass. Like uh, outside. Uh, Come on down. Uh, um, she or does she not participate. She has COVID. So do this this next week when you okay. Yeah, we're okay. going to do it on the 15th. Testing right without COVID. You, you. And just to be to be clear, it does not have to be done at a meeting. That is the ceremonial process. You can, when you are clear and negative, you can go into the office and sign it anytime. And you would be, and then it would be effective. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Christina. Okay. So, um, next item is general manager contract uh, and the report out from closed session. I point of order. Oh, yeah, we've we've already covered the report out from closed session. Yes. Yeah. The only question would be, given that this was on the agenda, even though it's been postponed. Yes. Does the public have the right to comment on it at this time? That'd be a question for our attorney. Right. Thank you both. The answer is yes. We should take public comment before moving on to the next item, as this item was already continued to the next yeah. uh, September meeting. So, public comment. I would just like to say that um, having worked with Brian, I support his um, being the general manager because I think he has a very vested interest in this community. And I would like to see somebody with that love for the community in that position. And uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have other comments? Do we have comments online? I see no, not in the room. I see nobody online. I see none online. Uh, Mr. Furtado. Public member of SLBWD, director of operations for SLBWD. Mm -hmm. I do not support and do not understand how this is being extended, how you guys have not made a decision on this contract. The actions last week or two weeks ago at the board, actually last board meeting, tell it all. He treats the public that way. 
He treats employees that way. And for him to vulgarly attack a board member at a public meeting, how is this continuing? The moral morale of our employees and the district is going downhill. And as Brian Laurier said at the last meeting, I sure hope we don't lose more employees. We'll expect because nobody's going to work for him. Nobody's going to work for him. He treats people like trash, and he's going to continue to do so. How a decision has not been made is beyond me. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Garrett Rose. I am the engineering manager for the San Jose Valley Water District. I want to thank you, uh, board of directors, for allowing me to speak. I'm sorry to report that Brian Fruess does not possess the appropriate character to lead the San Jose Valley Water District. Mr. Fruess cannot control his behavior, which results in unprofessional conduct and abuse of staff. On July 18th, 2024, Mr. Fruess lost control of his behavior and directed vulgar language at the Board of Directors during a recorded public meeting. Following his outburst at the public meeting, Mr. Fruess attempted to discuss his behavior by asking me if I thought he was an a-hole, but he used the expletive. I did not feel this was an appropriate question to pose for my manager, and I refused to answer that. I have heard complaints from staff accusing Mr. Bruce of cussing at them and even asking one staff member, are you as stupid as you look? Mr. Bruce is unprofessional and disrespectful in his interactions with staff, creating a hostile work environment. Mr. Bruce is reluctant to take the advice of staff and appears to be in favor of hiring consultants at premium rates. When project pricing was double for the anticipated cost, management staff advised Mr. Fruits to reject the bids and perform the project with district staff. Management staff pleaded with Mr. Fruits to reject the overpriced fees. Mr. Fruits refused to take the management staff recommendations and proceeded with the expensive consultant. Brian Fruits is a terrible general manager and should not continue in his position working for the San Jose Valley Water District. Mr. Bruce is vulgar and unprofessional and therefore should be dismissed immediately. Thank you. Mr. Holloway. I just wanted to address the sentence that uh, Ms. Lowen referred to uh, earlier at the close, before the closed session, she talked about one particular sentence in this contract that says that uh, a future board cannot terminate the general manager for 120 days or something like that. Um, so my understanding is that anything that's done by one board can be undone or redone by a future board. So a provision that is trying to tie the hands of a future board, I question the legality of that sentence. Because I, I don't think a current board can tie the hands of a future board. So I think somebody should investigate that sentence. Thank you. Well, I have a question on that. Intro and <laughs> point of order. Yes. Point of order. Yes. Point, of order. Hey, hey. point of order. I think only people that have been recognized yes. should be able to speak. Yes. And we do it's not need to have conversations going back and forth between the public members. You should speak to the board or thank you. Any other comments? Uh, you are also a member of the public. <coughs> Okay. okay. Anybody uh, online? So, um, moving on. Committee appointments. Discussion and possible action by the board regarding a committee vacancy. We have a vacancy on the admin committee. Do we have any nominations for the vacancy on the admin committee? Point of order. Point of order. Yes. James? Yes, sir. Cut it. 
What did I do? We don't need the conversation. She came in my ear. We don't need the conversation. Thank she you. She walked to me in my ear. Okay. If you answered her, you were talking. What? Let's move on. Let's move on. Okay. Call a recess, oh Please leave. Can I call a recess. Okay. Things are quieted down. Okay. Oh. Did you say something? Uh, I started to uh, address committee appointments. So we have a vacancy on the admin committee. Do we have any nominations for that committee? Normally, we look to the president to have yeah. a suggestion. Well, well, exactly. I was going to say yes. the board policy is the president can come uh, and is the one to make the appointment subject to ratification yes. by the rest of the board. So, However, I'm going to however, however the, the question yeah. I have is uh, who you might want to do that with. So are you going to appoint Brian? I, I'm going to ask Brian if he would be on the admin committee. Uh, I would not uh, like to be on the admin committee. Okay. So that's... An issue. Um, Bob is already you're already on the committee. Yeah, but but you know, Jeff, in the past, part of being on a board is serving on the committees that the president appoints you to. Yes. Um, there were a four year period where my finance expertise was completely overlooked and ignored, and I was summarily booted off the finance committee. So I have to say. For someone to say, I'm sorry, I don't want to serve on it, doesn't really work. We're all members of the team here, yeah. and we need to work on the committees to which the president has appointed us. It's not, oh, I want to do this, that, or the other. And for those four years, I said nothing. Because part of my job as a board member is to work on the committees that the president appointed me to, whether I liked it or not. Very good point. Uh, what Bob asserts is inconsistent with the board policy manual, and I decline the offer of appointment to the admin committee. We will postpone this to the next meeting when we have an additional board member. And after we've had a chance to look at the board policy manual. Yes. yes. Department of Water Resources. Excuse me. Public you have to comment. take public comment on that. Comment. Yes. 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 Deborah Lewin, Malpico Canyon. Um, just as a side, I when is the last time the administrative committee has even met? Because I believe it's been canceled by Mr. Cruz for months and months. Um, I looked in the board manual, and I, and I know you're down one committee member, but I looked in the board manual, and it said you may be, you would still meet the requirements for having a quorum with the other members there, and yet it hasn't been. So that's a problem. Yes. And if it's going to continue to not meet, why don't you just eliminate all the committees altogether? Cannot take one and say this committee is not worth my time as a manager, and and have the other ones still continue. Um, Mr. Largie, I think that working on the administrative committee would be very beneficial for you. A lot of it has to do with board policy, administration, setting policy, how to set policy in the district. Knowing what policies there are, and you seem very unfamiliar with that, I think it would be a really good chance for you to catch up and perhaps contribute to what you see as shortfalls. And I hope that you will reconsider and accept that position. And I agree from my reading of the board policies, the chair appoints people. Yes, you're right. Up for question. Thank you. So. I have forgotten what other committees you are on. I have not been appointed to other committees. Then I think it's really incumbent on you to take this appointment. 
Point of order, Jeff, you already said we are going to continue yes. this to the next okay. meeting. I agree with okay. Bob. We'll continue with the next meeting. Yes. Any other comments? Thank you. There's a comment online. Oh, Elena. Yeah, I, I just I just wanted to say, like, I think you're going to continue this since I haven't been sworn in, but I, I would be more than happy to show everything, buddy, uh, that I am more than just a biologist and would love an appointment to the admin committee if this is uh, put forward to the next meeting. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, Department of Water Resources Tank Replacement Project Contract Amendment and Service Agreements. Thank you, President. Um, so Garrett is going to go ahead and present this one. I may have some comments at the end. Thank you. The board of directors authorized the contract with CD Miller Engineering for the design of the DWR tanks replacement project in amount not to exceed $671,727 at the June 6, 2024 meeting. Following execution of the contract, Ms. C.D. Miller Engineering contacted the district with concerns about subcontractors' general liability insurance limits. The contract the district has with Ms. C.D. Miller Engineering, the general liability is an amount of $2 million. The subcontractors' general liability was only at $1 million. That would be a contract between Ms. C.D. Miller and their subcontractor. I brought this to the general manager and asked him for how the district shall proceed. He recommended that we directly contract with the subcontractors. Uh, this would this would save the district over eleven thousand dollars in markup fees since we would be directly contracting with the subcontractors. The district has a prior relationship with the geotechnical engineer, Harvey Sanitation Associates. Their geotechnical reports were included in the RFP. They had performed a geotechnical investigation at the Redwood Park site and the Lost Acre Drive site, where the district did accept the $1 million general liability. And so that's about all I got. We want to proceed with direct contracts with our percentage, GD land surveying, save the district money. Okay, so comments from right, the board? I was going to comment at the end of this. I just wanted to point out one reason, because you notice one of the contracts is certainly within my signing limits, but both of these constitute a, a little bit of a deferral from our normal contracting procedures. Yes. These came to us by way of the prime, or the, sorry, the primary consultant and their subconsultants, but because of this insurance that it was either put Masidi Miller in the middle of this, which we didn't want to do. Um, Haro, Haro Kasunich has done a lot of good work for us. Likely they would have, if we did an RFP, it's likely they would have come out on top. Um, as for the the surveyor as well, um, but that's the other reason this, we're bringing this to the board. It's transparency, and it's just pointing that out so that it's all about boarding. Um, but yes, as Garrett mentioned, you're saving a little bit of money, and we're also just moving the contract along. Thank you. <coughs> Comments from the board? Yes, I've got a a question on this. Um, I've I've done this uh, this type of an arrangement before with um, engineering consultants, you know, to separate them. But uh, does the district lose anything in uh, the professional liability aspects by having our uh, design firms in this relationship rather than under the umbrella of one lead and the subs? Well, it was my first choice was, in fact, I, I'd asked that we put it all under one umbrella, but mm -hmm. primarily from the sake of project management. Right. We're only managing one contract. 
and for bandwidth it's just to, to leverage and not have to manage three separate contracts. Liability wise, I mean, each one is, I mean, if somebody sues, they're all gonna be in the, in the house together. If somebody sues, they're all, they're, everybody's gonna have to show up. So I don't think that it changes that. Of course, I'm not the ultimate authority. We could always ask, that, pose that question to legal if you'd like. Okay. And to your point on the additional management, I would, I would hope that because of our relationship with the geotechnical firm and their uh, somewhat limited aspects of the actual design, that we don't have to do a lot on that and that your uh, MME is still doing most of that direction because they're the ones that need this ultimately. So that's all the questions I have. Thanks. Hey, Bob. Yeah, it's an interesting position to be in here. Um, I opposed this contract to begin with because it was like almost a quarter of a million dollars over the next nearest bid. And there was the justification for that was what I would call weak, in my opinion. Um, so, you know, to save $11,000 out of uh, 230 or whatever it is, is, is sort of like, yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, when it comes to money, that's one thing we don't have a lot of. So I'm glad we're going to save a little bit of money, but the original sin is entering to this in, in the first place. Going forward, if we could find some way to harmonize uh, liability uh, so that we don't have these issues, that would be great. Two million is um, not uncommon nowadays. Mm -hmm. I'd say 10 years ago, 1 million was, was common, but mm -hmm. inflation being what it is, mm -hmm. uh, I see 2 million. In fact, I'm even starting to see requests for 5 million mm -hmm. in a lot of the contracts I'm doing, which is a huge show. So um, let, let's see if we can harmonize these things going forward as well so we don't have to do this over and over again. Mr. Larry? I, I have no questions. Comments from the public? Seeing none in the room, is there anyone online? I see no one online. I'll make the motion then that the board directs the interim general manager to execute amendment number one to the professional services agreement with Mesty Miller Engineering for the design of the DWR tanks replacement project in the deductive amount of 125,707, reducing the not to exceed amount from 671 to 727 to uh, 546 and $20 and execute a professional services agreement with Haru Kucinich and Associates for the geotechnical investigations of for the DWR tanks project in the amount not to exceed 86579 and execute a professional services agreement with GV land surveying for the surveying of the DWR tanks projects in an amount not to exceed 27,300 and authorizes the general manager to execute extensions and non-substantiative modifications as necessary to the agreements. Second. Board comments, any comments? Public comments? Seeing none, call the vote. President Hill? Yes. Director Fultz? No. Director Largate? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Consent agenda. There are three items on the consent agenda. Does anyone wish to pull anything? Director Fultz? Uh, item 11B. 11B, the Fall Creek Fish Ladder Contract Amendment. Can staff present what that's about? Um, point of yeah. order, could yeah. we uh, go ahead and do a dispose of the other two items? Yes. Sure. Yeah. sure. So, Art, do you want to move the rest of the? I'll, I'll move that items uh, 11A and 11C 
uh, be approved as indicated in there. I'll second that. Okay. Public comment? Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't see any public comment. Okay. May I take a vote? Yes. President Hill? Yes. Director Fultz? Yes. Director Largate? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. All right. Management presence? Okay, we now have the Fall Creek Fish Ladder. Would staff present what the issues are on that? Um, I just have a question, actually. So okay. maybe that'll just be faster. That's fine. Yes. Okay. Um, and you have to bear with me because I'm sorry. I did not really understand the justification for another month and $30,000 uh, to be spent. Uh, it wasn't clear what, why, what we were doing, what was happening. Um, sorry, I didn't get it. No problem. So the original contract was supposed to be finished uh, in October. You know, that's when we were supposed to be out of the creek. We had an, a delay because the motor control center was not available. So we're just now getting the motor control center uh, programmed and connected to the pumps. And that will operate the pumps in coordination with the Kirby treatment plant. <clears throat> Um, we're currently operating off the old control center. So once we're able to have all that uh, working, we can demo out the old and we'll be done with the project. So we're about six months behind. And so what are they doing for us again? Are they sort of <laughs> watching us install this? Yeah, yes, yes. So they make daily site visits. They do the labor compliance as a sub consultant. Um, they do, what else do they do? They review the payment apps and they, they facilitate the change orders. So we really are hoping here that they're not going to have to spend $30,000 doing this monitoring of the pump replacement. Uh, correct. So what they do is they bill us, uh, kind of like a T&M contract for the time that they spend on the project. Okay. That's why, even though we're six months behind, they're only asking for one month's additional fee okay. to cover the extended time. After we're done with all the work, there's still project closeout. So that is the submittals from the contractor. Once we're satisfied with the work and with the closeout, we will go down to the county and record a notice of completion. Right, right, right. Once, uh, I believe it's 35 calendar days from the recording, we release the retention to the contractor. And then it's a done deal. We have a one-year warranty on the work, but they will have been paid in full at that point. Yeah, okay. And then at that point, the uh, Mercedes Miller's oversight of all this kind of goes away. Then, right? Okay. Correct. Well, I, you know, it's it's <laughs> like really okay. Um, uh, I, I can make a motion, if, please. Yeah. Um, the board authorizes the interim general manager to execute. Uh, an amendment and restated professional services agreement for construction management services with Mercedes Miller Engineering Inc. for the Fall Creek Fish Ladder Rehabilitation Project in the sum of $31,490, increasing the not to exceed amount from $264,675 to $296,165 and to execute extensions and non substantive modifications as necessary to the agreement. Second. Public. Comments from the public? I just have a question. Um, has, has the contractor uh, already put time in that would exceed the original contract? It sounds like you, you said that it's gone six months beyond, and presumably they've been working as needed all of this time. So have they actually put in time already that, that we'll get into this $30,000? So I believe you said that this is this part of the contract is time and materials are built, building us by the hour as they do the work. Correct. This is a consultant that's doing the construction management for the district. Okay. That's not the con. It's not the contractor that's building the project. I believe the question though was, 
has have they already exceeded the yes. not to exceed amount and we're catching up or are they kind of getting close to it and we need to do this to make sure they don't go over I don't know, maybe um, maybe Heather knows. <laughs> I'll respond, just give me a second. Please. Okay. So the district received a letter from the CD Miller Engineering on July 1st, 2024, uh, which indicates that um, the schedule for finalizing the fish ladder has been extended, chiefly due to supply chain delays on the motor control panel equipment. In accordance with our existing contract, we request approval of the additional service allowance for increased schedule based on actual time required for project construction. In our existing contract, we had estimated construction to be complete in November 2023. The project is substantially complete and operational. However, we are waiting on the motor controls and final completion as anticipated within the next month. Although this is more than six months beyond the original schedule, we only request one additional month of construction management fee. This reduced fee is possible due to the project's team's efficiency and saving hours during the active construction period. And that enabled us to extend our services far beyond the original schedule. I respectfully request an increase in our fee proportional to one month of additional construction management services, $31,490 as quoted in our existing contract. Thank you for the opportunity to serve the district. If you have any questions, please call me. My understanding is the $31,490 will complete the construction management activities for the project. Still didn't quite answer the question yet, but I don't know that we can get it tonight, yes. which is, did they go over, which is right. why they were asking for this money, or were they just kind of coming up on it and as a prophylactic measure, given this additional work, time that's going to be involved, they're asking for another month. This is a very fair question to ask, and um, I, I think these are the kinds of things we should expect questions about going forward when it comes to finance. But no answer tonight, probably. No. So I think you made. We a need a motion. motion. Yes, I did so make a motion. motion. You made the motion. motion. I second it. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Director Fultz. Yes. Director Largate. Yes. Director Smalley. Yes. All right. Unanimously passes. Okay, we have no district reports tonight. We have no written communications tonight. We have no informational material. We are going to adjourn the public session at this time and the board will go back into closed session. Oh, we need to take um, public comment on the second, this, this closed session item before you adjourn to closed session. Okay. Uh, let's see, where are we here? Conference with legal counsel, anticipated litigation, significant exposure to litigation pursuant to government code 54956.9D2, two potential matters. And what would they What would they comment on exactly? Yeah, I agree with Bob. Yeah, we, we can't, <laughs> there's nothing we here. We can't that. say anything about them at this point. And, so, but if you want to comment, please, please, uh, please don't. Yes. <laughs> okay, no, there are no public comments. So okay. the public session is adjourned, and we will, the board will return to a closed session. Thank you all for coming. Thanks. Thank you all. Yeah.